welcome back. Um, there's one book that I've read before, and it's called uh, Closer Than Brothers. And in a way, it compares uh, two batches of the military, one before martial law and those that actually participated in the martial law. Um, one of the things or impressions I got is that the present batch of the military seems to be far different from the batch of the military in the olden days. Um, so go to one big difference that I have come across in my readings is that there seems to be more of an open attitude to adventurism. What can you say to that, Ambassador? Uh, well, uh, let's go back to history. No? Uh, so the, the Americans came over, then they had the scouts. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Commonwealth Act number one created the Philippine Army under General MacArthur and Marshall. So uh, up to this time, I still very believe, having uh, been exposed to the military, having taught the military as a National Defense College, na ganyan pa rin sila. No? This, this is a professional army. These are boys that have been uh, given scholarships, uh, uh, probably lower middle class uh, mm -hmm. thing, lumalabas sa PMA. I have talked to them. They're just like uh, any other college student, mm -hmm. uh, and, but uh, with a little bit more uh, commitment probably because they are willing to lay down their life mm -hmm. for their country. Yan ang namamatay sa Mindanao, yan ang mga first uh, line of defense, no? et cetera. So they have all of the uh, Christian virtues, uh, or Filipino virtues, if you like, of uh, love for country, and all that sort of thing. And, uh, pero, nagigay yung professional army, nagigay political army, eh. Because, uh, uh, and it was politicized by Marcos. Marcos uh, wanted to present yung kanyang constitutional authoritarianism. But you cannot do that without army support. Mm -hmm. So he co-opted the military officers, no? Officers, and politicized them. And we're still trying to get rid of those politicians. Politician well, soldiers. Politician soldiers. Okay. Uh, like, uh, they are now uh, people like Onasa and Trillanes. They mm -hmm. have actually shared their uniform. They're putting on their, uh, you know, mm -hmm. thing as... Uh, uh, lately, with that uh, crimson gown as mm. senator judges. <laughs> so this is the evolution of the political thing. Ganyan. So, um, and, um, solution. Mm -mm. Pwede. Let us go back to the reserve army. Uh, small, small, professional, regular army. Right now, 113,000 yan, no? Mm -hmm. But the population, 100 million na tayo. And uh, we are growing at about 2% per year. So uh, I think it's now time to revisit the uh, reserve army mm -hmm. thing. Keep a small regular army. And this is the way to solve the insurgency. Yeah, that, that's a, that's so a that will decentralize the armed uh, forces and that prevent the coups. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. We'll, we'll go back to that later because I think it's the same. It's in line also with what Obama is thinking about as far as his own military is concerned. Yeah. But uh, if I may go to Eric, seven coups, seven coup attempts, and then a couple more during the panahon ni Gloria Arroyo. Um, does it, ha or has it given your military some sort of parang superiority complex in your mind? Uh, wh what do you say? Well, actually, the first mistake was, ang problema kasi dyan, binago nila yung konsepto ng national security. Mm -hmm. uh, sa, sa saligang batas ngayon na pinangunahan ni Corazon Aquino, binago ang konsepto na yun, na ngayon, ang ating sandatang lakas, ay siyang uh, protector ng people. Mm, protector of the state. Or, no, uh, people uh, first. People, uh. And then the state is mentioned. Okay. It used to be just the concern of the armed forces was the state. But when you remove one element of what comprises a state and clearly puts that, mentions people first, there is one problem to that provision, which is uh, who initiates the protecting the people? Mm -hmm. When should the armed forces of the Philippines uh, initiate protecting the people vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the government because this is this is the EDSA to uh, uh, reform the armed forces movement provision which was institutionalized into the Cori uh, Aquino constitution mm -hmm. which is very dangerous so that's an open-ended question now but be that as it may uh, alam mo Jeremy ang problema ngayon sa armed forces of the Philippines is eto hindi alam ng tao no hindi ko lang nadala yung listahan ko but we're cutting down brigades infantry battalions and divisions since cut, when? Since when? Uh, within the six years, uh, okay. they'll be doing that. Th they'll be cutting down. And uh, it will be at dangerous levels. And this happens at a time when um, the unarmed component of the communist insurgency is gaining ground and becoming stronger. 
But, but wouldn't that cutting down, uh, as you say, be in line with what Ambassador Romero is saying? Because it's possible, like in the U.S. Army, they're cutting down, they, but they're building up on technology. Uh, man. Well, we cannot afford the technology. Yeah. So what do we have? Only people. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. to be specific about it, the Constitution does not really talk about reservists. The Constitution speaks about the armed forces of the Philippines shall be composed, mandatory, shall be composed of a citizen's armed force. And a regular force may be put up for its security. Okay. Now, when you talk about the citizens' armed force, we're not talking about merely reservist. This goes back again to historical underpinnings. You're talking about Aguinaldo, Bonifacio, and Lapu-Lapu, which mm -hmm. is a people's war. And in fact, the, the 1987 constitutional commissioners, when they ask what is a citizens' armed force, it is every citizen, which means, according to Bonifacio, every woe to every man, woman, and child called okay. to the service of this country. I, if I may focus, let's 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 uh, let's not get into a debate on whether or not the size of the military will be big or not. But uh, uh, under uh, the military, it's 80-20. 20% 20. 20 regular force, 80% reservists. That's okay. that's the formula. Okay. But be that as it may, what what would you say about the quality of the military now? I mean, I, I've read a book, for example, um, like in the Four Stars, uh, tra tracking the careers of General Petraeus and the like. They're surviving. Um, do we have the quali that quality of, of, of generals and leadership in the military we have now? The um, with, with knowledge in foreign affairs, relationships, and, and what have you? But first of all, l let's say, wh what's really the threat? Mm -hmm. To me, as I said earlier, and I insist on this, the threat is domestic. Mm -hmm. And then the domestic threat is rooted in poverty. Kaya makaya makaya NPA, sumaroon kaya yung MILF. That's poverty, actually. Mm -hmm. Which is taken advantage of by foreign elements to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. That's why they have become viable. Pero if we are only addressing the threat, which is domestic, I mean, how many NPAs are there? The most was 26,000 during the time of Marcos. Now it's down to probably about 5,000. And these are bandits, mm -hmm. more than uh, ideological uh, thing. Mm -hmm. MILF, okay. The, if you go to arm, there are more politicians there than there are MILF, actually. I don't know who reinvented the MILF. I think it was past the uh, post-EDSA invention. Huh? But um, so if you are looking at a local threat, I think this this is police action. Eh? Mm -hmm. Malaysia fought their surge by police action. That means to say that you have to give the policemen glocks. They have to give them bullets because they can't answer the situation. So okay. now we have constabulary and army. That's uh, also one way of preventing the the the, the goal pedestado. But if I may just want ask ask one question in the vein that you're uh, no, going through. I, I read your article in one of the magazines that we've uh, co-wrote in, yeah. and essentially you're pinpointing at the morals within the military itself. Yes. Um, what can you say about the the as far as the Christian values and the morals uh, within the military leadership and among the soldiers themselves? The, uh, the I think you were mentioning something like it's a sexual mores and, that's and why like one big threat that uh, we have not talked about here mm. is the uh, secularism, the consumerism. These are what brings about graft and corruption. Once you have graft and corruption at the top, that graft and corruption will uh, go down to the bottom. Okay. So uh, we have been investigating generals and all that sort of thing, mm -hmm. mga pabao, et cetera, et cetera. That's really graft and corruption. And, uh, but that can seep down. Give, mm -hmm. Given uh, time, that can seep down to the uh, moral of the people, mm -hmm. of the foot soldier. You know? But uh, I'd like to think that uh, uh, it hasn't gone down there yet. Mm -hmm. But we have to nip it in the bud mm -hmm. at this time. And uh, I think there is need to also give them a little uh, dose of uh, what uh, Christianity is all about, of their Islam, Islam is all about, because uh, the feeling that uh, uh, it's not all about materialism, it's not about uh, killing people, it's about Okay. Uh, you know, other things. Yeah, good, good point. And taking the context within which the Ambassador is saying in the social conditions and the like, um, Eric, uh, can I ask, how sophisticated is our military now in its capabilities to meet the problems? Considering right now a cyber warfare, considering the fact that other militaries I know are getting to train into foreign languages, foreign cultures, to meet the mga terrorist threat, how sophisticated is our military now? Uh, to quote, if, if I'm not mistaken, Newsweek or Times, th they, they said the AFP is just 
slightly better than a paramilitary force. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the way they describe We don't have uh, uh, external capabilities for that matter. So we have to count on, as I said, uh, some form of alliance. Can they, can they do the job? Yes. In the immediate, uh, <laughs> they can wrestle <laughs> with any armed force in terms of the NPAs and the MILF. That ca I, I should know it. I was in Abu Bakr when there was a flag raising uh, a ceremony, a ceremony when that happened. Um, in case of the NPA, it can also be done. The problem, our biggest problem now is political because many sectoral congressmen are fronts for the armed component of the communist movement, mm -hmm. meaning they're funding it, they're contributing to it, and, uh, and it's done legally. Uh, that, 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 that is where the problem is. Well, we have only a couple of minutes left, and I think we've pretty much outlined para sa audience natin kung ano yung mga challenges sa face ng military and consequently finiface ng bansa. Um, I, I'll give some time for you guys to give your parting comments, but I, if, I, if I may, how do you think we can <coughs> solve itong <coughs> problem na nakoconfront nat natin sa national security? Ambassador Romero first, and then see si Eric. Uh, well, uh, I, again, let me repeat, I don't think that the foreign threat is really that serious because any attack on the Philippines is an attack on the United States. Because uh, uh, if uh, the, the because of the geopolitical presence of the Philippines, mm -hmm. uh, they cannot afford to give away the Philippines to anyone else. Mm -hmm. no? That's for their self-interest, not ours. But this also happens to be ours, self-interest. Okay, so that given, then let's concentrate on strengthening our domestic defenses, mm -hmm. you know? and uh, so let's forget about uh, missiles, submarines, thing, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We can't afford that national budget. Let us concentrate on good governance and the local government levels. Give the police there mm -hmm. bullets, ammunition, and uh, give them a good leadership. They can take care of these brush fires happening in Mindanao and mm -hmm. uh, areas in uh, San and above all, give them good governance, Eric. good leadership. Yes. Okay. Pag pinag-uusapan natin yung national security lang, no? kasi kadalasang iniisip ng mga sambayanan, pag, pag pinag-uusapan natin yung insurensiya, eh labanan lang yan, para sa AFP lang yan, mali yun. Tayong lahat dapat uh, kasama dyan sa usapin ng, uh, no, no, mm -hmm. ng uh, insurensiya. Bakit? Dahil ang national security ay hindi lamang po labanan, yung harapang labanan. This can be a hologram of, of dimensions. For example, dito may tubig tayo. No? Darating sa limampung taon, ito ay magiging parang petrolyo ito, gasolina. Kung sinong bansa ang may tubig, posibleng kubkubin tayo. Ngayon, para lang maintindihan ng mga tao, ngayon, doon sa punto ng uh, mga pagdating ni Joma Sison, si Joma Sison ang naging consultant para nag, nag, na natalo ang Nepalese government at nakapasok ang Nepalese uh, Communist uh, Army mm -hmm. doon sa, sa kasundaluhan nila. At kaya ang, ang papatakbo ngayon ng Nepal ay mga komunista. Ganong klaseng formula ngayon ang ginagawa nila dito sa ating bansa. Kaya nga napag-uusapan na yung 5,000 ng mga NPS baka pwedeng ipasok sa AFP. Natataon sa pagbalik ni Joma Siso na baka masama sa isang National Unification Council. Bakit? Ang Kongreso, nandyan ang mga matitigas na mga pula ng mga komunista. Ang nasa Malacanang naman ay mga tinatawag ng mga sosyalista. At magkakaroon sila ng modus vivendi para magkaisa at magkaroon ng National Unification Council. Ngayon, pagdating naman sa MILF, bakit malaking problema ang MILF? Kung ang isang bansa, katulad ng Malaysia, handang magbigay ng pera sa presidente ng Pilipinas, ng dalawang presidente ng Pilipinas, at maglagay ng pera, ah, dyan sa isang bangko, dyan sa bandang Saba, eh, ibig sabihin, eh, niloloko na tayo. <laughs> okay. Well, that was very interesting. Um, yun nga lang, sayang, kulang lang yung panahon natin for, for, for this episode. Um, but I think, more or less, uh, nakita natin lahat kung gano'ng ka-complex and uh, kung anong mga different factors that play in with regards to national security. Um, I think even from the viewpoints of our uh, two guests, we could see that there are really differing and varied views on how to approach the subject and even then kung ano pa yung uh, mismong nature ng national security. Siguro ang pinaka pwede natin masabi lang sa pang uh, uh, sa purot dunot lahat, eh, ang national security nga, as sinasabi natin, ay eh, isang natural right ng isang bansa. Kung hindi natin gagampanan ng maayos itong, uh, itong tinatawag na right na to, eh, tayo yung nagpababaya at tayo na rin ang may kasalanan. Uh, kung tinatawag nga ng mga lawyers na in order for us to protect yung ating pagiging uh, bansa, eh, we are allowed to do a just war. 
uh, if we do not make that just war uh, in order to protect ourselves, then it is actually the fault of the country itself. Well, that's it, and I hope you enjoyed our uh, episode for today. I uh, hope you can join us for next time, and I think uh, we will be joined by Father Ses Magsino, and we will continue more on natural law uh, then. Thank you very much, and good day.